To build dynamic web apps, understanding variables is essential. In WeWeb, you can find variables in your data tab. You can create them here. And there are different types of variables. You have text, also referred to as strings in uh, different programming languages, numbers, which can also be called integers, booleans, which are true-false values, you have objects where you can store information about a specific item. For example, uh, which user is currently connected, that would be an object, or which character on our page we selected, that would be an object as well. An array, which can also be referred to as a list, although it's not exactly the same thing, it depends on the programming language, but the idea is you can have, inside an array, you can have several objects, you have a list of objects. So if you think of a spreadsheet or um, Airtable base, think of it as an object is a row and the array is the entire tab. And then you have query strings. So you may have seen those at the end of URLs, um, um, like for marketing, for example, they're very helpful with a uh, little information about UTMs to understand where people came from. So let's first look at an object example to explain how it can help you make your web app dynamic. So here we have uh, an object variable that we will call selected character. And we will create this. Preserve on navigation means that um, the variable, the value of the variable will not change. It will be preserved when the user navigates to a different page. In our particular use case, this is very important because what we want to do is we want to click on a character, navigate to a different page, and then display the data from our selected character variable. Save in local storage is to save the value in the user's browser, so we don't need this here. It can be helpful if, uh, for example, you had um, a, a text variable that said if this was in uh, dark mode or like theme. So you could have a theme that says by default it's light mode and when the user clicks on um, a button it changes to dark. And maybe this information you want to save in the user's browser so that they don't have to select tell you which is the preferred theme every time they come to your web app. Now back to our use case, selected character, and this will be an object which will be empty by default. Let's create this variable. You see now it's available here. This means it's available throughout your project. It is possible in WeWeb to scope a variable inside a component, but this is a more advanced concept that we'll cover in separate videos on components. Okay, so now that we have this variable, what we can do is go to our layout, back to our layout and select the card. So now you see this card. So if I go on the image, it only selects the image. If I go on card, it selects the entire card. And what I wanna do is create a workflow so that when a user clicks on, an, on one of these items, I get the information and update my variable. Here we have a list of items. These are characters from an API. So we have bound to a collection. If you're not familiar with collections, I invite you to watch that video. And this means that the flex box here is repeated as many times as there are items in our collection. And now if we go on the card, we can create a workflow here that will say on click, change the variable value. I will change the selected character variable that I just created and I will update it with the value from the current item. And I have this information here. So now here I'm in my debugger. If I go to variables, and I look at my selected character, it's empty. But if I test my workflow, it's 
filled with the information that is here, the current value here. Now, the beauty of this is that if I click on other items, so in preview mode on Summer Smith, this information is updated. So you can see that the vari variable value is dynamic. You can take, we can take it a step further in our layout. Let's go back to our card, to our workflow. Let's name our workflow, go to character page. And here in the action, we will say change page or rather navigate to, and the page will be the character. Now, let's see if I click on Morty Smith, I go to this page which looks weird. It looks empty. There's like this broken images here, image here. That's okay. There's actually a text that I can't see right now because it's already bound to something that it's information that I don't have. So I'm going to unbind this and I see it's bound here because of the little plug. So same, I'm going to unbind this. And instead here, I will bind my text, my heading to the information that I have in the variable. So here, this is my, these are my variables. And from the project, I have the selected character variable. So now I can bind to Morty Smith. And this works for images as well. Uh, the image elements can be bound to um, a URL, an image URL, which we have here. And now if I go back to characters, preview, Beth, now this will be updated. And this is because it's bound to my variable value, which I can find here. I can find it here. And this value is preserved when I change page because here I selected preserve on navigation. There are other use cases for this. If we go to back to our homepage, for example, and I layout, if I go to mobile, you see that my nav bar is a little bit different and the navigation menu here is hidden. Here we have bound this information to the um, a Boolean variable. So the display mobile menu variable, which is here.